We are back. Did you miss us? Yeah, you did. So we are here in July. Summer is in full swing. This month, we are celebrating our nation's independence. You know, the 4th of July. So get ready to pick out your favorite red, white, and blue outfit. America is turning 247 years old. Don't we look good? Anybody ready for fireworks? Or for me, fireworks, cheeseburger, and a hot dog on July 4th. Somewhere I will be having that. And here's a holiday you might not have heard of. Cheer up the lonely day. That's on July 11th. I like this. Go and check up on an elderly neighbor or some friends you might not have seen or been in touch with for a while because you never know how just one phone call, one text, or a visit could brighten someone's day. Finally, National Talk in an Elevator Day. That's a real day. Talk in an Elevator Day is July 28th. So a few years ago, we ran a Just Say Hello campaign in O Magazine. That was back in 2014. We were trying to show you how easy it is to spark up a conversation. So if you're having trouble, try this as an icebreaker when you're in an elevator with a group of people. Say, I think I'm coming down with something. Just say hello, see how they're doing. Join us as we explore all of our favorite things coming up in the month of July and welcome to the world according to Gail. Bread lovers, this is for you. And we all know how Oprah feels about bread. I love bread. She's not alone. A lot of people feel this way about bread. Do you want to know the history of bread? Did you know that baking can be traced back thousands of years to the ancient Egyptians? Well, for us humans here in 2023, the only reason why I know that information is because I visited a new bakery in New York City's Chelsea Market. It's called Alf Bakery. It was founded by Amadou Lee. For over a decade, this guy worked as a baker, a pastry chef, and a chocolatier in some of the city's finest restaurants. Now he's putting his twist on some of our favorite savory and sweet treats. God, this is so soft. This is so moist. Yes, yes, yes. Whoa. Oh my God, this is good. What does bread mean to you? I mean, as I said earlier, um, what is life? How do you eat your bread? A few days on the table. I don't, you know, wrap it on a top towel, leave it there. First day you eat it with whatever meal you have. The second day you wake up in the morning for breakfast, you use a toast, you can make an egg sandwich, whatever. Uh, and then you use it again for dinner. Okay, <laughs> let me try the mushroom. <laughs> can we get the mushroom? Yes. Here we go. Alrighty. Do we just eat it with our hands? Yes. Mmm. <laughs> mm. Do this in a salad. It's fantastic. That's why the ALF should not stand for fancy, it should stand for fantastic. fantastic. Let's go for fantastic now. Mm -hmm. If you could only have one bread, one kind of bread for the rest of your life, <laughs> the rest of your life, what would that be? I mean, that would be a baguette. A baguette, okay. No. I tell you, he takes bread very seriously. He says we eat with our eyes first. So if you plan to visit New York in the near future, run, don't walk to get a taste of Amadou's unique treats. And if he's there, tell him we said, hey. Now, we all know this. Women cannot stand a cheating man. We don't like cheater, cheater, pumpkin eaters, but why am I drawn to stories about them? I love watching stories about this. In a new Netflix series called Survival of the Thickest, Mavis Beaumont finds herself in shambles after a bad breakup. The comedy drama stars Michelle Buteau. She's the one who wrote this best-selling book. It's based on that. She plays Mavis, a plus-size black woman in her late 30s. When Mavis's boyfriend of five years cheats on her, she catches him in the act, so to speak. Never pleasant. She's forced to rebuild her life as a struggling stylist. It's time to put Mavis first. I'm here for you. This is me trying to be single at 38. And to start over. So we sat down with Michelle the other day, and here's what she said about the new show. Survival of the Thickest, I love the title because I took that to mean many meanings, a couple of meanings too. Does it? Oh, 100%. You know, as I was um, writing the book, Survival of the Thickest, it, you know, it was just these stories and essays that didn't fit in the stand-up world. And a lot of them were about self-acceptance and getting through stuff, hard things. Um, you know, to really figure out what body positivity meant for me. So the most important relationship you're supposed to have is with yourself. And so that's the place where I was coming from, where I'm just like, okay, we have to rebuild our life and really think about what we want 
because he cheated on us and we have to, we have to go, which, and I've been cheated on a lot. I'm not going to say cheated on a lot, but unfortunately I'm a member of that club too. And it does really shake you to your core. I so love the Luca character because it's very clear that Mavis is taking nobody's sloppy seconds because as great as Jacques was, Luca is fantastic. Your decision to put that character with Mavis. Yeah. Because that's not something we see often either on on these kind of shows. I mm. thought, wouldn't it be like wet and wild and wacky if my character just happened to be out and having a good time and, you know, just met someone and just said yes. And I always say, you know, especially for my friends um, who are single and looking and always have a very long list of what they're looking for in a partner, like... Sometimes it's fun to be casual, responsible, but open your your mind, your heart, and your legs to love, honey, because you just never know. I mean, be safe. You're too cute for bacteria, yes. but still. And so <laughs> I love that, um, yeah, we were able to put that story in the show. I love, love everything she said. Did you hear that? Open your mind, your heart, and your legs. It's okay to enjoy extracurricular activities casually, but be responsible. I love everything she says. Thank you, Michelle, for that. Survival of the Thickest premieres on Netflix July 13th. I'm a Barbie girl in the Barbie world. I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. Feeling very stupid at this moment. But Janelle thought, come on in, Janelle. She thought this was a good idea, so I'm going to do it. Janelle's mother painted this, so thank you, Janelle's mom, for the prop. If you've ever played with Barbies, and a lot of us did, Did you ever dream about what it would be like to live in Barbie land? That was so silly. Lucky for us, there's a new live action movie that's going to take us all there. That's right. The Barbie movie is hitting theaters on July 21st, and I can't wait. Barbie is played by Margot Robbie. She realizes her perfect world is falling apart. Then she finds herself in a real world adventure. Margot is joined by Ryan Gosling. Love everything he does. He plays Ken, of course. And listen to this cast. America Ferreira, Dua Lipa, Issa Rae, Kate McKinnon, and Will Ferrell. This is the best day ever. It is the best day ever. So is yesterday, and so is tomorrow, and every day from now until forever. You guys ever think about dying? But that's not all. We got a tour of a new Malibu Barbie pop-up cafe right here in New York City. Who's the we? Shelby, of course, was there. Janelle was there. Come on in, Anastasia. Come on in, Josh. Come on in, Owen. This is a team. We all went to the Malibu Barbie pop-up. Didn't we have a good time? Oh, great time. Right here in New York City. It took us back. Okay, you may all leave. It took us right back here. It took us right back to the 1970s. It was so cool because when you walked in the door, you're greeted with, hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. In the second you walk in, the sign greets you. You know that you are transported back to 1970s Malibu and all things Barbie. Don't we all love Barbie? Of course, yeah. That's why I'm wearing my tank top. I'm ready for the uh, beach, the Barbie beach. So this is called a Barbie moment. Yes, a Barbie moment. You know, because if you're not taking photos and putting them on Instagram, did you really do it? (laughs) Did you choose your outfit today? I went with like a classic business suit Barbie, (laughs) but I had to wear sneakers. So this is kind of what really brings us all back to when Bar- you know, Malibu Barbie first made her debut in 1971. So these are actually original Barbies from that time period, including the truck. So these were actual dolls from 1971. One. Wow. Correct. <laughs> wow, Michael. Yeah. Is this your doll? This is your Barbie doll? <laughs> and this is your Ken? Hi, Ken. So you you guys actually brought the dolls with you. That's unbelievable, y'all. Can I see your purse? Oh my God, look at this purse. Look at this purse. I think the opportunity for everyone to see themselves as Barbie when they are here and to be Barbie themselves. Everybody to see themselves as Barbie. Is one of our main goals here at the cafe. Everyone should leave here feeling like they were Barbie. Oh, I love your pink skirt. Oh, it's a Barbie skirt. Did you guys know we're standing in Barbie's box? 
Yeah, this is supposed to be, you know, when you buy the Barbie doll and she's in a box? That's what this, I know, that's what I said. See, I didn't get that either. This is, you're in Barbie's box. Big smiles for Barbie! Michael told us that he wants everybody who walks in that door to feel special, to feel happy, and to feel loved. Let me just say this, mission accomplished. It was so much fun. And we were all grown-ass people, and we had a great time. And oh, by the way, the food is good, too. The pop-up is open here in New York City until September 15th. You know these hits I'm about to tell you about. Why? Because they transcend time, because they are that good. It's my party and I'll cry if I want to, you know it. Or, we are the world. And don't forget the whiz. When I think of home, you know them. They were either written or produced by a music icon, Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones is celebrating his 90th birthday. Listen to his name. Quincy Delight Jones, and that's what he is, pure delight. The Hollywood Bowl is hosting a tribute to him in Los Angeles on July 28th and July 29th. John Mayer, Jennifer Hudson, George Benson are just some of the all-star megastars who were slated to perform on those days. So if you're over on the West Coast, please make sure you grab some tickets. And here's a quick note for you. Quincy is also producer of the new Color Purple movie, So Is Oprah, that comes out in December, Christmas Day. So we're wrapping up. Here's the question. How was the list? Hope you saw something on it you like. There's lots going on in July. July has some fun things in store for all of us. You know, we always love to hear your thoughts on our monthly episodes of The World According to Gail. So leave them on OprahDaily.com as well as YouTube. And let us know what you think of this month's list. We'll see you next month in the eighth month of the year. That will be, of course, August. And as I say at the end of every Zoom Zoom, leaving meeting. Click.